Okay, let's take a look at a few charts. See what's going on out there. Hopefully I get to hit the ball this afternoon and get a play. I was saying earlier, I think my um, swing trades are beating my day trades. Month of April. Okay, so where I want to start is MTBC. I'm looking at a play for this afternoon. That's just straight Momo stock. I'm going to actually reset these charts really quick. So I'm going to take a look at um, the S&P dollar, gold, oil, those kind of issues, and then uh, take a look at um, some swings and anything else that we think of. So it looks like the markets are, I'll look at the pressure in oil, hey, wow. It's a lot of pressure, actually. I'll take a look in oil first here. That's pretty serious pressure. Continued pressure. So I'm just going to do a quick view in oil and S&P and a few others just to get a feel for what's going on here. And I'll do a detailed uh, look at some swings and risk rewards and setups. It won't be quick. Come on. These larger files. Yeah, there it comes. I can get away with a quick look in here. Oh, look at that. Look at there, eh? Interesting. <clears throat> okay. So Epic just nailed the top of that turn, and um, actually we have a big report coming out for oil, gold, and silver, and the dollar actually, tonight or tomorrow, and um, we've got some new, um, some new information, more than just uh, intraday trading. So it's on its channel wall right now. Well, that'll be interesting to see if it breaks that uh, downward channel wall. That would be really bearish. I mean, it is right now, but that would be excessively bearish. Interesting. Soil's in trouble still. I can't get into the model and what's going on there, but I can say that... Uh, Obviously bearish, but uh, could get uh, radically bearish if it loses where it's at right now. Okay, the S&P. So we're trying to hold on to the markets while the powers that be try and figure out how to get everything repaired so everybody's happy so we just go on now the other thing too really quick is um, our model in um, wow this is interesting you're seeing the residue <laughs> you're seeing the residue of algorithmic modeling in there <laughs> those are all calculations uh, sorry I didn't expect that to come up I'll bring up another one but anyway, our algo for uh, our algorithmic model for the S&P also nailed the top. 
I'll just wait for this chart to come up here. Okay, so anyway, as I was saying, uh, the Sora model for uh, the S&P uh, predicted the top a couple weeks before it got there, and it hasn't uh, got over that previous high since. And um, at the same time, Epic, our oil algo, was talking about a top in oil, and uh, that resistance was much more intense than the one on the S&P. That's interesting. So its pivot is right there, that gray line. This chart's all messed up. It's just a working, it's a, it's a worksheet. But I just wanted to see where it's sitting in relation to its pivot. So it's right on the pivot. So it'll probably repair and then go again. So there's nothing heavy duty happening there, that's for sure. Oil heavy duty. And we even went as far as saying that uh, oil would come off and the S&P would hold, but that S the S&P had uh, resistance. So those algos are uh, firing on all cylinders. We're going to take a look at gold here really quick so I can get a feel for what's going on in gold. The calculations of the model for um, the miners uh, relative to gold. It's been really interesting too. Wow, we're getting some serious lag here. Unusual lag. Let's get rid of this chat. Okay. So unfortunately, this lag, I don't think I'm going to have it fixed until I'm on the beach. I'm going to the beach, but not right away. And when I get to the beach, I'm going to set up um, set up my PCs instead of laptops because I'll be in one place for 60 days at a time. Um, okay, so gold, 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 gold. So it's still over. It's 200. So the Trump trade, as far as gold is concerned, is still on. It's just under pressure. But on the daily, the stochastic RSI is starting to curl up. MACD is coming down, though. Squeeze momentum's down. So still all kinds of indecision. I feel like we've been a groundhog day here for some time. Well, we have been. February 20th. March, April. Yeah, over two months of this yuck but I guess if you know your levels and you've traded it you do fine but it's holding so still decision time oh GDX is off just about 2% there I was just imagining uh, Yellen hanging out with the Saudis. <clears throat> um, our oil algorithm, by the way, has a number of um, people from the Middle East that uh, rely on it. Okay, so GDX. Wow, that's impressive pressure. Stock RSI is at the bottom on the daily. That's important to note. Under the 200 MA. So it's still an indecision. Well, wow, it's bearish. MACD down. And the um, the most interesting thing to me is the squeeze momentum indicator. Mind you, it's kind of just dipped before, but I mean, uh, overall, that's a pretty good tell. But, you know, same crap there. So. Yeah, a couple of months of crop, really. 
and all of it. Take a look at the dollar really quick. Actually, you know what we should do? I'm just going to cheat here quick. I can do it with the dollar because it's still being tested. I have to be careful with the oil algorithm and the gold algorithm, but with the dollar, it's in test mode, so I can share it. Uh, where do I get it? I go here, here. I'll tell you this algorithm, it fires off very, very, very precisely, but it just hasn't, it hasn't been tested like gold and oil, but it's accurate. Let's see where we are in the matrix. Yeah. So it's right on that support. That's not that's not the main support. It's on two supports. It's on one there and one there. Its main support is down here. So its downside is ninety five sixty one. If it loses that, it's it's going down but uh, yeah anyway so it's mid-range right now between its resistance right here at 101.75 at support at 95 call it 95.50 for an easy number and uh, yeah you won't see that chart every day okay real quick little peek here one more of these and then I'm gonna go over to so I'm not even talking about trading them because it's just like it's just it's too mucky for me I'm not interested right now and in trading them while where they are I'd rather trade things that are predictable right now um, I just I don't want the chop I want predictability getting old maybe where was I here? Oh yeah, right. Bitcoin related. Wow, talk about lag. Crazy. Litecoin, Bitcoin. So I'll have to update this, but I'm looking at a pretty serious trade in here soon. Okay, so let's take a look at swings or any stocks anybody would like to take a look at. Uh, gold, we probably won't have a trading room on that for not this year. Who knows though? Once we get that oil room up, that oil room, it's a lot of work, man. I never imagined it. If I, if I knew how much work there was involved in what we're doing, I would have never done it. But um, I, I never quit, so. <laughs> okay, First, let's look at our plays for the day. So, um, I am going to, oh yeah, right. So I just want OTC really quick. This one's, is it not PVTC? PV. CT. PVCT. I mean, from a financial perspective, a gold room would do a lot better than oil because there's so many people that would do that trading with yeah we can do algorithmic modeling with with equities but we don't actually have a service for it PVCT so this really came off on me. So I think this was my buy in here. Back 
here. Huh. Well, at least it's holding. Interesting. Okay, now what we want to do real quick is we want to take a look at, so around earnings, so here's an example. So once you get out of the micro uh, cap, small cap, I just want to take a quick peek at a few of these charts to see if we actually get a winner. Because you never know, there might be a winner in here. So we missed the opportunity in this one. Not that there isn't an opportunity, but I'm looking for the one setup where the 20 goes through the 200 and the MAs get set up. So we missed it there. I'm going to be working with some other setups here soon, but I want to finish this setup. So we missed it there. So you see what I'm doing, right? So around earnings, um, I check all these stocks for that setup um, because if you get a if you get one that's you know a bottom play um, with decent earnings or good news, so I always check them. Even like not even not around earnings. Uh, beyond spring, I don't know anything about this. It's a new issue, obviously. Um, so even news and that kind of stuff, right? So the larger, the larger stocks, mid caps, large issues. Um, anyway, I like to check them all and how I set up my swing plays. So we missed the opportunity in here too. Oh, that's a really bullish chart, boy. Um, that's a tempting chart, but it just, it, it doesn't have, the, I'm looking specifically for that play. That play gets you more return. It's the margin, right? It's the width, uh, the return for time. It's a, it's a time versus a re return thing. Because if you're going to, on your swings, if you're going to get 100% a year, you have to get a certain you have to get a certain return in a certain amount of time. It's just like when year many years ago I was in retail and I had a, I had a chain of retail stores, and that's what it was all about. It was all about inventory time, you know, the turn. So here uh, we missed it on that one, and you know what? It, it's a nugget, so you're only going to find them so every so often. So what's HF? real estate services. I don't know this equity. Interesting. She looks like the gold chart. Doesn't it? It's a lot like gold. Reminds me of gold a lot. Um, so when the 20 got the cross there, lots of Lots of lift. Tony got the cross in here. A ton of lift. And then over here, Tony got the cross. Let's get rid of those EMAs on the day trading, right? Clean it up a little bit. Tony got the cross here and a bit of lift, but it's consolidating. There's our 20, there's our 200. I got some left. So what did they get? 2813 to 32. So what is that percentage wise? That's well at least 10% if not more. So you look for on these you look for 10 a minimum 10%. Um so it was enough. And then you look at time frame and that tells you your turn, right? Um now the 20 hasn't even got through the 200 here and it's round right through on earnings. Wow, surprise, 61% to the upside. No wonder I got some mojo. So what you would do here is if you're running a, you know, and I end up, you know, when I'm trading full-time, I'll have many charts, 50 to 100 that I'm watching, um, so that they just set up perfect. But this one might set up. Like, I would put this one on your watch list. Um, so you're watching for is the 20 through the 200, right? So this is 
going to do its thing up here. Um, good earnings, right? So it's probably going to set up. Now, I don't know the uh, fundamentals, and I don't really care right now. All I care about is whether or not it's going to set up. So I publish uh, and lock it just for my own purpose, a watch list. But, uh, I guess it's a lazy man, lazy man's way of running my watch list. That's one way I do it. Uh, random tweets, I mean, text to myself. And PTI. PTI. Wow, what a junk issue. CRY. PTI, like when I worked on the stock market, they would laugh that that manages this. Uh, that's just bad management. Bad promoters, bad bad team. CRY. Nice stock. Man, that trade's nice. So, wow. Cryo life. Never traded this one either. Medical equipment supplies distribution. So it's up on earnings. Wow, 80% surprise. And then, you know, your basic fundamentals are here. And you do your research on it. But I don't do the research until it gets close to set up. Because why do the research on your fundamentals and everything until it's actually set up, right? Just efficiency. So the last time the 20 broke through, you had this. Now the problem here is, of course, you're not getting that real heavy swoop down, but you don't really like look here. You didn't, you didn't get it. You got a trend, and you got the 20 through the 200. This is this is uh, pretty cool stuff. I don't know what the fundamentals look like, but um, this is pretty funky. So then you just uh, go and make yourself a note. So I'm just trying to equip folks that uh, maybe don't have these ideas, right? And don't really know how to um, structure their world. This is a really efficient way to do it. So WST on the daily. Interesting. That's strong. A strong stock. Holy. Now the problem is, you know, all the way through, you just don't get enough width versus time. So the turnover, like inventory turnover in a retail store, on these trends, that's why I don't trade them, right? The people that are, you know, the professionals. Um, the professionals that... Um, talk about you know how um, expert they are about beating alpha they'll trade and um, you know it shows in their results um, hence the reason the hedge funds are doing so well lately uh, but anyway time to stop picking on the hedge funds and figure this out so this is actually possibly divergent in other words um, that breakout looks like, well, it kind of looks like this one. No, it doesn't. Anyway, um, this could be pretty cool. Could be. But not not, not completely my cup of tea. But, um, you know, you may be, in, you know, somebody may be interested in it. MSL. Okay, see, there's the swoop. So MSL got the swoop. Oh, sweet. And then it comes back, see? It always does that. So you know what they call that setup, right? That's a, a bowl. Some people call it a cup and handle, but really it's a bowl. But anyway, it's testing after the swoop. So technically speaking, you know, when they send you to school for this, it's called the swoop with the bowl. Um, I'm joking, of course, but that's perfect setup. That's what you want to see. So you want to see the swoop come down, come up, 
ride the test and go boom. This is this is trading exactly like it should. What is this? Mid South Bank Corp. Interesting. I know what this is. I'm familiar anyway. Natural resistance is right there. Right where it's trading. There's another one above. So then you want to figure out your um, your return on time. It's too bad we weren't in earlier here, but still, like, how are the other MAs setting up? So you got your 20, your 50, and your 100. They're all on the they're all on the right side. So all you do with this one is you wait for it to set up over that resistance. Yeah, this one might be a little difficult. I mean. Darn it, you know, if you were in here in the bowl there, that's where you want to get in. I think what you do is you set your alarm, right? So you got your watch list, you set your alarm on the stock. So this this is where you would set your alarm. So when you do your homework, you find these and you send them to me so that I don't have to do my homework because I'm tired and I never get time to do this. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so, you know, you'd set your alarm right there at 11.19. And so while it's riding through your ear, you don't even have to check. As soon as it hits 11.19, alarm goes off, kaboom. And then uh, look at that. So what's your, what's your turnover? Well, that's November 22nd to December 7th. So we'll call that, you know, it's Christmas break there too. So two weeks. Um, and you got 14.25 on 11.15, you got 20%, right? It's more than 20%. It's not 40%, about 30% anyway. I have to get a calculator out in two weeks. Nice. That's what you want right there. 30% in two weeks, that's decent. Um, you want to catch those kind of moves because you want 3% on the day is really what you want. But I would have wrote that. Well, yeah, it's 10 days, call it, trading days. No, it's a little more than that, eh? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, 14 trading days. So yeah, 3% a day, every day for 14 days. You see it? That's, that's the one that sends you to the beach right there. So that's what I'm talking about by turnover. You're looking for 3% a day. And this one, you wouldn't have needed another one for 14 days. Uh, yeah, so the answer to that is, is uh, yeah, there's always, I love the ETFs and the ATNs. So when I do my trading challenge, I'll be in them lots, right? Like 50% of my plays are ATNs and ETFs because you get the three time leverage, but I'm in and out fast. But anyway, um, uh, yeah. so there's always, never, you never not have these setups. That's why when you're day trading, that's the aggravation of day traders. So day traders, when the market is iffy, they get caught in purgatory because you can't get the width, you can't get the margins, you can't get the range. So while you're fighting in this day trading purgatory, you got to have you got to have this happening, um, and this is always happening, either up or down, and it's very predictable, right? It's not like day trading. So day trading, you know, it's like emotional, right? So it's different. It takes away more management, emotional management it takes away all so many skills, so many. This is simple so simple no actually this wasn't 200 going up through it um or the 2300 it was already through it well yeah yeah because you put it on watch here because it comes off sorry yeah so i was on track there and it's running through the bowl and while it's running through the bowl you you have your alarm set and uh boom you trigger it and that's three percent a day and you know why do you want three percent a day well you figure out three percent a day a compound um, you'll get an idea so instead of it taking 26 months to go from 10,000 to a million 
um, it happens a lot faster. But at 1% a day, 10,000 goes million. 26 months. But 3% is much better. Anyway, Sartaj and I um, are going to bring a setup system to you for the OTC because instead of 3%, it's 30%. Anyway, talk about that some other time. So that's a good setup. Well, wait a second. That was a good setup. Now, your test of resistance up at the top, uh, 20, 50, 100, and 200. The MAs are all on the right side. So really, what what can you do here? you got to wait for the confirm and uh, go again. That's the problem with missing the move. Yeah. So it's the study part that, you know, the original part. <laughs> Look at it. See right there? <laughs> uh, boom. Crazy. I think I think you get the drill. So I'm, you know, you have to look at a hundred charts to find a good one. So you would start following stuff like this, right? So you know, it looks like a bottom feed right now, but uh, this is just a junk chart. But anyway, it you know it gets you the return. It's a newer issue too. A pop. Oh, I see. I've already been through these. Yeah, that was that junk one for before. CVI. What's that doing on here? Interesting. CVI Energy up ten percent. That's really interesting. Anyway, I know this company well. Twenty through the two hundred didn't get you much range there, did it? But for all intents and purposes, it's in the bowl right now. But this is like, this is an energy play. So, you know, fundamentals do play into it. So, anyway, you could, you know, set your alarm anyway. So what you do is you set your alarm above your previous high. So right here at 25.75. So if this bowl is out, and it gets over 25.75, your alarm goes off, and then you can hit it. But it's it's not a good uh, it's not it's not a good company. Well, I mean it's fine, but it's not gonna it's not gonna get you the range. Other things are gonna get you. But I would take that trade. But it wouldn't be high on my watch list. I've I think I have 26 on my watch list right now for this specific. Okay, so anyway, but when it qualifies, because it's in the bowl. It's come up through in the bowl and over 2575 boom hit it see what you get okay so let's look at some of these other ones that are closer so it is boring you know this isn't like um, superstar Lamborghini you know bathing with my money stuff but um this is real trading in my mind. PLM in there. I mean, there's lots of setups, but not. it's reproducible consistently with the lowest amount of stress and the lowest amount of risk. So certain, you know, certain rooms have, there's lots of good ones out there, but cert, certain ones, you know, they're outliers and they have um, systems that are difficult to reproduce. And as a result, people get chopped up. So sorry, I don't want to keep banging on the same ones here, but this one has got me really curious. Like, I'm so curious. Like, what I want to do is, I want it to, you know, come off here. <sighs> So I can get an entry on it because um, it's just a smoke and play. Just want to see where my entry would be. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't have to come off much. So the fibs do line up there. So my entry is 1988. And I, I want that entry. Okay. Um, but I'm bum bum. OTCs, news, marts, charts. How did Snap make out? Because that one is set up. 1.2% on the day. So here's where the fundamentals do play in. <laughs> hey, I'll be on the beach, but uh, you won't see me rolling around with my money or Lamborghinis and yeah you'll never see it one hour chart now a nice Aston Martin on a Sunday drive sure okay well folks I don't know what to say because it's so set up. But you know, it didn't get that really, really nice pop, eh? When the two, when the 20 got through the 200, you see? It got that really nice pop there. But it didn't get it that time. Anyway. So I'm just rolling around on the same ones right now really quick. I'll be out of them really quick here. Sorry. Juno. Juno's paid me over and over again. Here we go. Come on, Juno. Well, it's going to pop when they get together. It's just a matter of them getting together. Grek. So yeah, I think I'll do that trading challenge next week. Markets are really crappy for it, but it might be better, right? Challenge me and, and I'll have to pull out tools I wouldn't otherwise pull out. Okay, what do we got here? But we won't be sharing that with people. We'll be locking that one down. I mean, way too much goods in there. Just to give that out for free. People got to have some skin in the game. <laughs> I was just thinking of a mentor of mine when I was younger. Okay, this is so sweet. So what was I waiting for here? I was just waiting for it to cool, I'm sure. Because it's so heated. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a risk reward target on this because this is just so ready oh it's just so ready the only thing you can do is wait for the stochastic RSI to come down and I guess fundamentals you can check out you know but anyway okay so I'm gonna set up my fibs really quick just take a really quick peek at what's going on here so I want to see that it's responding to them, and it is. There, there, there. You want to check it really quick, right? You want to know it's going to respond to its fibs. You do not want to be in something that's not responding to the fibs. Because that would, in essence, make it fibbing. You don't want that to happen. Okay. Now. work with me. So what I should really have up here is a really clean chart. Let's get rid of all this. Yeah, I don't want to kill it. I'll just move it. Just 
trying to get some space to work here. There's a quicker way to do it, but whatever. Okay. So let's see on the wide range here if it actually responds to its fibs. So that's interesting, kind of. But you know, if you take the whole range like I'm doing right now, that's actually kind of common for that to happen. See how it, it's off a little bit, but that's kind of common. It's probably on when I go right here. Yeah, see? Right there. Yeah. So anyway, it's wi wide range, just debatable. It doesn't really matter. It's your tighter frames that you're worried about. But, um, so really I would call this there and call this up here. Is that where my fibs are? Ick. Kinda. Kinda. It's kinda yucky. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. It's the wide view. Now, we'll get a tighter one, right? So we're gonna put a tighter time frame in here because we wanna be able to trade it. So here's one here. I like this one better because there's the port resistance there. So basically a, a pivot of sort right there. So what we're gonna to see if this responds. Actually, let's just get rid of the noise. Remove. There's many reasons to find out if it's responding. But you wanna know, first of all, it's gonna tell you the truth. You need the fib to tell you the truth. Okay, so this is this is good. You see how I picked that one? Support, resistance, pivot, start there. Okay, so that's a little tighter time frame than what you do. Um, and so you go with the, um, the trend line, right? So you put your trend line here, because that's your trend line, like that. And it doesn't have to be precise, you just want to get a general idea of how it's trading. Then what I'm going to do is clone it. And now I take my clone and I put it beside it so I can get my little matrix going here. Now, I, you know, I make that perfect later. Um, and then what you do is you take this and you go get your uh, fib going the other way. Where did we end? Right there, right? Yeah. So then you bring your fib down here. Oh yeah, look at that. It used it as support too. See? Right here. Okay, and then you do the same thing. You clone it. it over here and there's my clone there now I know where my it might not seem like a big deal but it is now I know where my um, quadrants are or the first quadrants in play right here now all I do is um, so I have an idea of where my extensions are so I'd go into the history of the, ch the chart and figure out its extensions. But anyway, I don't need to do that right now. Uh, but the, the last video shows how to do that. Um, so to get an idea of where its symmetry extensions are, right? Uh, to know which fibs it's going to hit. You know, when you take your entries, you, you can do a, a calculation, right? Of um, your return. But um, I'll let you guys do that. So I'm going to assume that I'm getting a full extension. Okay. 
get a full extension on this while well, you're outside of your quadrants there you're probably not gonna you're probably gonna get the 786 I bet you that's what's gonna happen on your first run anyway and then once it gets to the you have to watch yesterday's video to understand but once it gets to here you know you might get into this quadrant now next right and then your extension is different but your first is probably that 786 at 489 what Twelve eighty six. Twelve fifty six. I don't know where I got forty nine from. Okay, so twelve fifty six. So there's my target. So um that's my target. Now uh, it's just uh the modeler in me, I have to do this really quick. I gotta just see if that's actually possible on its symmetry. So you just take a trend line, just work a symbol work one of them you know I can tell by eye that it's symmetrical with some of the other moves and symmetrical with this move right here this one anyway let's see if it fits so then you just um, take your price where it's at right now put your extension in there and wow look at that It is possible. Huh. I can't see it hitting the 1448 on this on this extension, but it says symmetrically it can do it. It's just that there's a wall there. That um, that diagonal line right there, that's a that's a quadrant wall resistance based on the Fibonacci um, model. Boy, that'd be aggressive. It actually got through it. Right there, or you know, somewhere in here, and he said, well, yeah, because it could hit it later. But anyway, I would set my target. I would expect my target to be uh, twelve fifty-six or fifty-nine or whatever it says there. Um, so, what's your risk reward? So, this risk reward is um, sixty-four percent to the upside, and now your downside. You set that wherever you want, right? That's the thing about risk reward. Um, but if you wanted to go technically with where it's broken, then you would set your your downside just underneath this fib right here. So technically, your downside support is at 763. So you know you would take this and you'd move it to like. Um, you know, just underneath it, 758 or whatever you want. And now, so 0.13% is your downside and 64% is your upside, if you did it that way. I don't do it that way. I, like for my, uh, for my swings, what I do is I swing with the MACD. So if you look at our, one of our swing reports, you'll see the MACD rules the day for me. I mean, I know all of this, and that's part of my decision-making process, but the MACD is the decider on the daily swings. And for some reason, my chart's not cooperating. But you know the rule. As soon as the MACD turns down, you're out. And it's up right now. That's one way to do it. Or you can do it the way I just showed you, you know, with the downside of your FIB when it loses that FIB, not, that FIB mark, that FIB support. So that's how you set up um, your targets. And that's why, I mean, it's difficult to get targets in play. You know, like we, now this is a little bit different because it hasn't got the history, but you know, it's trading, you know, at certain angles and that kind of stuff with certain sym symmetrical extensions. And that's why our work is, you know, it's just one example because there's 50 different indicators we use, but one example why the work is so precise because um, the time cycles are so predictable um, so you know your target on this 
is uh, right here ish in that neighborhood and uh, your date on that is June now a lot of people would say well that's no good well uh, it's almost May I mean that's just over a month for 60% it's not so bad if you catch the inflection right you know with that play I was showing you and you get your you get your turn right then you know it's much more aggressive than that so I think I'm making sense that's um, it's kind of how it works but you know you, you got to get your money to work for you that's the whole goal right to get your range and get your turn so you got to do your homework um, and you know when the 20 got up through here it didn't really pop aggressively so I like it but I don't like it like I don't like the turn um, you know because you know that targets probably hit on June 20th and um, you know so I'm in it for uh, whatever 40 market days for 60 percent uh, it's just over a percent a day there's nothing wrong with that but it's not uh, it's not what I want I want three percent but it's still I mean it's a fantastic swing trade I mean you beat alpha <laughs> I don't know how many times over in uh, you know whatever 40 days or whatever it is um, yeah so that's GREK so hopefully well there's a video right so you can watch how I did that um, but that was the goal of today was to get this point across and how you set up your risk reward and your extensions and it goes together with the video from yesterday and go find these plays for us so we can all get to the beach and um yeah i think that's about it for today i'm just going to take a look at my list here real quick oh i just well made it hold on two seconds Okay, um, yeah, so that's pretty much it, hey? Yeah. So that's all you do. Um, get your quadrant set up so you know where the serious resistance is. Get your symmetrical uh, move set up. Uh, figure out where it's moved before so you know approximately where your extensions are going to be. And... Um, find that 20 through 200 uh, see how it responds to the 20 through 200 and previous moves and away you go um, tomorrow's Friday so I'm gonna cap off the week with as many of these put you know, like a compiled list right so I've just showed I've shown you how to find them what it is how they react where your support and resistance is where your extensions are how to set up your quadrants for you know your real important resistance and uh, support and the things that you're looking for and the indicators and then your entries so really to cap that off and put that put that setup aside um, you know let's just master list it tomorrow and run through all the different charts that we can possibly run through um, you know just one after another or basically make a list um, and then I'll set alarms on them all and and then we'll watch them and and uh, next week we'll go on to something different okay so that's it for today thanks for coming out guys bye